Hi there. Now, as some of you may be aware, Netflix recently released what I'd call one of the best films to end the year with, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, a film adaptation from the stage play of the same name by award-winning playwright August Wilson. It stars Viola Davis and the late Chadwick Boseman, who both give an outstanding performance. The film covers the fictional story of Ma Rainey and Viola Davis plays the title character, famously known as the Mother of the Blues, for pioneering what blues music is today. Before we talk about the movie, I'm going to focus on who the real Ma Rainey was. Just a heads up, this video contains some spoilers from the movie. But before we get into it, if you like what we do, then... A one, a two, a you know what to do. The legendary singer was a true pioneer and her music in the early 90s has made a lasting impact on blues, jazz and rock and roll that still influences artists today. She had a magnetic stage presence, dressed in long gowns and covered in diamonds and matching gold teeth. Rainey had a powerful command over her audiences. Born Gertrude Melissa Nix Pridget in Alabama, Pridget claimed to have been born on April the 26th, 1886. But the exact year of her birth has been disputed with some saying she was born in 1882. Her parents was Thomas Pridget Sr. and mother Ella Allen Pridget. She started performing as a teenager in Columba, Georgia when she was about 12 to 14 years old. According to biography.com, Rainey worked at the Springer Opera House in 1900, performing as a singer and a dancer in the local talent show A Bunch of Blackberries. Also a member of the First African Baptist Church, she began performing in black ministerial shows. Bridget claimed that she was first exposed to blues music around 1902. She was married at the age of 18 to William Rainey and the two formed the Alabama Fun Makers Company, but in 1906 they joined a troop called the Rabbit Foot Ministrels, a much larger and more popular establishment as a duo Ma and Pa Rainey. She continued with the Rabbit Foot Company after it was taken over by new owner F.S. Walcott in 1912. In the late 1910s there was an increasing demand for recordings by black musicians and although Rainey wasn't the first black woman to be recorded singing, that being Mamie Smith in 1920 and Rainey came after to become among the very first. Rainey said she found blues music when she was in Missouri one night performing and a girl introduced her to a sad song about a man leaving a woman. Rainey also said she learned the lyrics to the song and added it to her performances. Rainey claimed she created the term blues when she was asked what kind of song she was singing. She was the first singer to combine vaudeville, a theatrical genre of a variety entertainment and authentic black folk music in the south. Essentially creating the blues genre of music. Ten years later, Ma Rainey separated from her husband and started touring with her own show, Madame Gertrude Ma Rainey and her Georgia Smart Set. In 1923, Rainey was discovered by Paramount record producer J. Mayer Williams. Already a popular singer in the Southern Theatre circuit, Rainey entered the recording industry as an experienced and stylistically mature talent. In the next five years, she made over 100 records, including Boo Weevil Blues in 1923, Moonshine Blues of the same year, CC Rider Blues in 1924, and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom in 1927, and soon this morning, also that same year. Rainey was known for her powerful vocal abilities and energetic disposition, as well as being known for her straightforward and provocative lyric about her upbringing and sexuality. Writer Daphne Harrison noted in her book Black Pearls, Black Queens, Ma had the ability to capture the mood and essence of the black rural southern life in the 1920s. Although her recording with career only lasted five years from 1923 to 1928 when Paramount terminated her contract, she didn't leave showbiz entirely. Ma worked as a theatre proprietor for a few years after that. In the Netflix film, we find Ma Rainey 
and her band one afternoon in a recording studio. The film aims to show the power struggle of the black band and the white managers who control her career once she is signed to Paramount. Chadwick Boseman plays Levy Green, a talented and ambitious trumpeter who desires to start his own band writing his own music but lacks the respect of the management as they downplay his skills and would rather buy his written pieces to be performed by white artists. Taylor Page, who plays Dusty May in the film, explains further how the racial struggle is reflected in the way the ending is set up in the film. At the end of the afternoon, we see Ma resisting to sign the contract just for a brief moment, but in the end, she signs the contract with the record label. This moment holds a specific significance that audience should note, explains Taylor. Not many people knew Ma Rainey wasn't literate. She couldn't read. So when her manager asked her to sign, she knew her power. She was very smart, but she didn't even know what she was signing. Taylor further goes on to explain, it's kind of like surrendering. You're banging on the door, you're setting up your boundaries so that people will finally respect you and see you and value you, but they don't. The film also features an additional scene at the end, which isn't in the play, but sees the music that Chadwick Boseman's character Levy had written being performed by an all-white group, but their rendition of the music is bland compared to the vibrant song it should be. This showcases the heartbreaking saga of black artists exploited by whites in power. Remember, if you think back to one of the most recognized songs in music, Hound Dog, is considered an Elvis Presley song, not a Big Mama Fortune song. Ma Rainey died of a heart attack on December 22nd, 1939. She was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1990. Described by African American poet Sterling Brown in black culture and black consciousness as a person of the folk. Her songs telling the story of ordinary people in the south. If you haven't seen the film yet, I highly recommend it and feel free to come back to our video and let us know your thoughts in the comment section. As always, if you like what we do, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Until the next time.